Thank you so much. It's a great honor to be standing before you this evening. I'd like to thank the uh, Jacobs family, the Klaus J. Jacobs uh, Foundation and its staff, uh, and the award jury for making it possible. I had the pleasure of meeting Klaus Jacobs once in 2001 at a conference organized by uh, Sir Michael Rudder, Lindsay Chase Lansdale, Kath Kernan, and others, uh, which was held at the Marbach Castle. Klaus Jakobs was a truly visionary business and social uh, policy leader who understood the value of behavioral and social research for promoting successful development in children and adolescents. Most research is collaborative, and mine is no exception. I've worked with dozens of colleagues, and it would take far too long for me to thank them all individually. But my dear friend and mentor, Gene Brooks Gunn, Heads the list. We've collaborated on a total of 32 articles and book chapters, and I'm delighted that she was able to be part of the symposium this afternoon, this ceremony this evening. My own research per perspectives were forged uh, during the 25 years that I spent at the University of Michigan's Institute for Social Research. For me, life course dynamics was less an academic exercise than the motion picture of turbulent employment and family changes that played out uh, year after year in the longitudinal study uh, that I worked on for nearly a quarter century, the Panel Study of Income Dynamics, PSID. James Morgan was my primary mentor in my early years, but the likes of Angus Campbell, Leslie Kish, and Bob Kahn roamed the halls, and I couldn't help but absorb the interdis interdisciplinary vitality of the place. By the early 1980s, news of and use of data from the PSID had spread to Euro uh, several European countries, uh, and generated interest in launching similar studies. The most ambitious and widely used are the German Socioeconomic Panel and the British Household Panel Survey. I had the privilege of serving as a consultant during the development of these uh, wonderful studies. The personal rewards for this work have been immense. As I was returning from a 1981 European trip, and standing in line in front of the TWA ticket counter at JFK Airport in New York, I struck up a conversation with the woman who, 18 months later, would marry me. <laughs> and uh, 30 years later, still edits every word that I write and puts up with my workaholic nature. Dorothy, this is our award. When the PSID began in 1968, there was a common misconception that poverty was a permanent condition and that view is common even today. Much of my early career at Michigan was spent describing the dynamic patterns of life cycle poverty. We showed that all family incomes uh, are volatile at nearly every point in the life cycle, uh, making sharp changes in living standards more the rule than the exception. Many of the patterns found in the US have been found in European panel studies as well. Seeking to understand the impacts of economic and social conditions on child and adolescent development has filled the last 25 years of my career. No single discipline has a monopoly on theoretical or methodological insights in this field of research. But when I started working in this area, there were remarkably few collaborations among the relevant social science disciplines. My own collaborations have grown out of service on a number of interdisciplinary research networks and committees, many of which included Gene Brooks Gunn. Playing the role of token economist enabled me to ask naive questions without embarrassing myself and to contribute economic, econometric, and policy insights into the often quite insular studies of development undertaken by psychologists. Shortly after I moved to Northwestern University in 1995, my research interests expanded to include both experimental uh, and qualitative methods. A randomized anti-poverty uh, experiment in Milwaukee called New Hope offered families, uh, low-income families, the chance of a contingent social contract. If they worked 30 hours per week, they received a generous uh, set of work supports that included a wage subsidy and affordable childcare and health insurance. Understanding how this program affected family functioning and child development was the goal of an eclectic subgroup of the MacArthur Network on Successful Pathways Through Middle Childhood. Aletha Houston and I designed surveys and selected child assessments, while Tom Weisner, uh, who is also here today, directed qualitative interviews with 44 treatment and control families. The New Hope experiment proved that the academic and behavioral capacities of children can benefit from a thoughtfully designed package 
of supports to enable low-income families to balance the demands of work and family and carry out the daily routines that promote their children's development. It also convinced me that the interaction between qualitative and quantitative research is required to understand why interventions have the effects that they do. Now based at the University of California, Irvine, I've been involved with a wonderful group of neuroscientists that include Chuck Nelson, Nathan Fox, and Kim Noble. If nothing else, developmental neuroscience points to the importance of pregnancy in the very early years for establishing the kind of brain architecture that best supports children's successful development. Together with outstanding, uh, several outstanding young social scientists, we're proposing to conduct the first randomized experiment that would test a causal connection between poverty reduction and brain development among uh, very young children. We plan to randomly assign some 1,000 low-income mothers and their newborns to several, in several di diverse communities to either an experimental group that receives $4,000 in cash payments during the first three years of their children's lives, or a control group that receives much smaller amounts. Research suggests that this income difference, if sustained for several years, should be large enough to produce meaningful differences in children's cognitive development. Most of our sites will be in the United States, although we welcome partners in Europe and other continents. Rigorous laboratory measures of children's brain structure and function, as well as measures of their health and behavior, will be gathered at age three. But to understand how poverty reduction improves brain functioning, we will also measure elements of family context that we expect to link poverty to development. Family expenditures, routines, and time use, parent stress, parenting practices, and childcare arrangements. The Jacobs Research Prize could not come at a better time. It will enable us to launch an ambitious pilot study two months from now uh, that should convince proposal reviewers that our plans are feasible and efficient. If all goes well, the main study will launch in early 2015. I'm profoundly grateful to the Jacobs Foundation and its 2013 Research Prize for making this possible. Thank you very much.